Hello Eco Gypsy. Right, today's little project is this old water tank. I just took it and got it pressure washed so it's clean inside or cleaner inside. And we're gonna put that down here as an auxiliary water storage. So I think I'm gonna put it in this sort of dead spot here and have that downpipe going into it and then join it up to this tank which is the water source for the toilet and bathroom that's in the shed and the unit so that's the idea the um, difference nowadays to eight years ago when I first moved in it we hardly ever run out of water and now it seems like we're getting very little rainfall over the course of two or three months and then a hell of a lot of rainfall in one day or two days so we need more water storage space so this is the idea for this the other thing I've just picked up which I'm quite excited about I need to find a little bit more about them is these two things these are sand filters for water for swim pools and you fill them up with sand they've got the input and output there so I'm hoping we can run these in accordance to the tank so I've got to do I've got a blue tank for each side of the yard so one over this side one over the other side but hopefully we can run everything through the sand filter before it goes into the main pump and main filters and that should purify the water keep a lot of the debris out which has saved me keep cleaning the pumps out well there she is in place not particularly aesthetically beautiful but and that is about as high as I can go um, to get that downpipe into the top obviously we've got to get the full so this will fill and then the pipe will come off the bottom of this and into this so I don't know whether that would be easier to put uh, exit midway up and then into the tank or whether we have this at the bottom and go into this we've got about we're probably going to miss the the top bit of that tank if we do that way I think we'll probably go from the bottom of this into the top of this one so that will go in around about here I would have thought to get a full um, I'm just gonna do this pipe direct that in the top and just for now not that we we might get a bit of rain that's graying up a bit but leave this tank um, open so it just flushes through uh, there's a little bit of sediment just left in there but we'll get around to that the nice thing about these tanks is you don't have to protect UV protect them uh, they're good thick bunded plastic so they don't really freeze up and as long as the pipes are all insulated we shouldn't have any problems uh, hold a hell of a lot of water we'll have about three and a half thousand litres over this side now so this is the first stage done we're in the top of the tank we've got a good enough fall there off the main building roof so and then what we've got to do now is put the pipe from the bottom of this into the feeder tank which is this one here this is about two-thirds in the ground so we've got about a thousand liters under under the ground there so we'll have to put a little a feeder pipe into that then probably the sand filter at the minute this has just got a direct feed from from this tank into the pump into a filter a sediment filter and then basically in running into the into the building so what I'll probably do is put the sand filter on here on this outlet um, so we've got an additional filter before it goes into the building um, and then that way we're sort of triple filtering everything before it even gets into any of the pumps so it should save me a lot of maintenance so I've been reading up a little bit about these sand filters these are two fairly big you can see all the pipe work in there 
So how it works is you've got a inlet and an outlet. The inlet goes in, the water flushes through the sand and then it comes out of the outlet. So these things are reported to be very, very good. The only disadvantage we've got is we have to put a hell of a lot of water. These are used for swimming pools and big koi ponds and stuff like that where you've got big pumps and high capacity of water. Now what I'm using them for is going to be just running shower water through um, and very minimal, sort of 5 to 20 litres. So unfortunately these aren't going to be what we're going to be using. So these are going to go up for sale and instead we're going to be using one of these and this is just a filter in and out there is a pump on this which we're probably not going to use so it just acts as a little filter before we get the water into the main system now one of the problems i have which i've probably mentioned before is when the tank runs low it drags a lot of dirt and crap into the pumps and you get air blocks and all sorts of problems so hopefully this should eliminate this these are very very cheap about 20 quid on on um, amazon and um hopefully this will do for me it's going to be as effective as a large sand filter so you can wash these cartridges out um so you get quite a lot of usage out of them and you literally just rinse them out when they're dirty so hopefully once we get this in line with the filter system we're using this should work very very effectively actually got some rain for the first time in months so the next job is going to be doing exactly the same got another blue tank here this blue tanks going in in replacement to where I've got the IBC tank exactly the same philosophy what we're finding now I've been here eight or nine years and what we're finding now is we're getting a, a hell of a lot of rainfall in a two day period and then nothing again for weeks now whether that's global warming or climate or whatever we need to store more water and get a higher capacity the difference with this tank is we're going to have an auxiliary uh, float switch built in so when the tank gets down to a minimal level we can pump the water from the ground tanks which we've got two of so there's about 3,000 litres underground um, that at the minute we have to manually pump up into the header tank so what we're going to end up doing is having two and a half thousand litres above ground three and a half thousand litres below ground these are all fed by the gutters from the roof um, the ground tanks are fed by the main roof from that down pipe there and they basically flush through and go into the overflow so you never got stagnant water in the tanks just by amping up our top our header tank if you like we shouldn't run low and by putting that um, the new filter in the line before it gets into the pumped into the pumps that should save us a lot of messing around and a lot of manual pumping and cleaning of filters and all the rest of it so yeah exciting stuff i've just got to pull that shed down um which has got the tank inside of it and we can get this blue one in place anyway that's it for today i'm gonna um probably do an update on this to see it's been very difficult because we haven't had any rain for months so um, we're going to do an update when the tanks are all run and we'll just see how effective and, and good them they are running but yeah it's the way to go if you're off grid you've got to keep um keep an eye on these things and upgrade accordingly um there's a lot of stuff i'm redoing from when we first got here so it's still better than being held ransom by the water companies Anyway, thanks for watching the video, take care and we'll catch you on the next one.